Silky golden light streamed through luscious green hills, reflected in the mirror-like lake around me in the Ninh Binh province of northern Vietnam. Bam! I had just taken a hard fall on a flimsy bamboo dock. I was so intrigued, so involved with what images I could create from the moment that I had tripped on a little rope and fallen flat on my face. Of course, I ninja rolled back onto my feet and kept on shooting. Photography did make me athletic, Mom. <laughs> but I must have hit my head at a certain angle, because when I got up, I suddenly noticed how naturally beautiful my surroundings were. I had planned to adjust saturation, correct color balance, and throw in some sun rays, and perhaps a bird or two for a good measure. Why did I feel this need to change what I saw? Why wasn't life enough? If photos collect beauty, that's why I like to take pictures. Photos, I believe, are made for a mix of three purposes. One of them is to trigger an emotional response through the telling of a story. Photos that focus on storytelling tend to hit me the hardest, taking something I don't understand and making it so obvious it's almost offensive. Like this picture I took of a Singaporean long-tailed macaque that evokes the story of a protective mother. When I gaze into the doleful eyes of this macaque, I see the story of a mother who's concerned for her child's future. Another purpose is to reveal hidden details, sights that the human eye can't see. It's a unique view into the world past human perception. These are my terrapin friends. They're also Singaporean, and I was able to capture the hidden detail of someone's legs and feet in one of their eyes. The most popular purpose is to simply record memories. This is perhaps the biggest reason why pictures are taken, especially in everyday life. While in Vrindavan, one of the most ancient religious cities in the world, in India, I met a boy who was not only my age, but who also shared my name, Yash. I waited for the perfect moment to best memorialize our interaction as he played cricket in a temple that was both crumbling yet powerful. I wanted to remember this person who is almost like my counterpart, more spiritual and more free-spirited when I returned to my mundane life in Edina. Photography has an intent to it, to capture a specific moment within a specific composition presented with other specific photos. When we are capturing images to preserve or to share our experiences, this can become an issue. As Susan Sontag explains in her essay collection on photography, photos seem like they portray reality, but are a medium that doesn't reflect how we experience it. This makes photos more than real. It makes them surreal. Here, I'm trying to show a fractured perception. What is photographed, how it is photographed, and when it is photographed are all the very intentional decisions, which makes a photo as prone to change based on the creator's intent as any other art form. If this intent isn't to accurately represent reality, then our perception of images could be like Dali's dream right here. Let's think of it like this. With these stacked frogs, each frog represents another layer of deviation that photos have from reality. The first layer of surrealism comes from freezing time. Photos take slices of time and expose them to far more scrutiny and attention than any other passing moment. I took this picture of a humpback whale in Baja, California a couple years back. And that one beautiful millisecond in which the whale breached represents the entire trip a three-hour-long trip filled with seasickness and unchanging expanse of ocean. The second layer of surrealism comes from intentionally choosing elements and then changing them. Photos are only a small window in the full view of the photographer. Often the goal with making an image is to make a picture that is as intriguing, as perfect as possible. While it is easy to spot the doctoring with an image like this, it's almost impossible with this one. I had added in the farmer in the back. I mean, technology even lets you create this. 
It's my deepest and most thought-provoking art. <laughs> New phones can automatically apply filters that slim your figure and remove skin and blemishes. They can even change the background and lighting to make you look like you were professionally photographed. Editing is becoming more and more accessible, and its results are being shared at a rate never seen before. Even after all that composition, let's return to my frog friends. There's still yet another layer of surrealism added to our photos. We constantly pick and choose what to show to the world. I do it too, almost every day. By choosing to display only the images that show me and my life in the best light, literally, I change the way that others see my experiences. While I can claim that I came across a three stack of frogs in my backyard, to be honest, I caught a couple next to each other and stacked them until they accepted their new lives. They were gently unstacked after their photo session. No frog friends were hurt in the creation of this image. <laughs> so sure, photos are buried in three layers of distorting reality. Frozen in time, intentionally composed, and carefully curated. But why do these layers together invalidate our satisfaction with life? If photos collect pieces of beauty, then the problem arises when the only photos that satisfy our idea of beauty need to be unbelievably picturesque. We see so many of these moments that are artificially intriguing that they may become our baseline expectation for what all of life should look like. Our brain has a tendency to acclimate to overstimulation by increasing its standards for what is stimulating. A fascinating neuroscience study done by McGill University on mice released pleasure hormones in their brains every time that they pulled a trigger. Every time this pu they pulled this lever, it was another dose of stimulation. The mice loved this lever so much that they all soon died from starvation and exhaustion. Thankfully, most of us aren't mice, although I do like cheese. Even so, diluting ourselves with the extreme selectivity of photography is like pulling that lever. Every swipe on Instagram trains our satisfaction with life to the surrealism of photography and not the realism of life. We see so many of these moments that our senses can be bombarded simply by the quantity because they're so cherry-picked, meaning that the surrealism bundle of photography can be extremely harmful if taken as a vision of the world. Photography, for all its purposes of capturing the world, can unintentionally degrade it. One time, I was sitting in a metro bus. I didn't see anyone looking outside the window, but instead looking in a window holding an endless array of stimulation. I'm certainly guilty. I lifted my own phone to take a picture of them. But the adverse effects from a photography may play into a larger issue in our culture of trying too hard to fill in the gaps in our lives with overstimulation. This turns into an endless cycle of compensating for reality's blandness. When photographing widows who had been shoved out of their homes and who now lived in Vrindavan, they would keep coming up to me, asking if they too could have their stories told and photos taken. These women who had experienced astronomical amounts of suffering had bright eyes and wide smiles simply because of my attempt to document their beauty. My camera had given them the spotlight attention that ne they never had gotten in their lives. Even if photos distort reality, their retention of sight will always be more vivid than what we can remember. We keep our best memories in photos, taking life's best moments and holding them. Photos let us traverse through time back to those intense moments of bliss, those moments that are so coveted. I created this image of a tent city for a city of Minneapolis exhibit on youth trauma captured by youth. Another image for the exhibit shows a friend of mine who repeatedly faced the derogatory slur against the LGBTQ community in the hallways of her high school. The unique ability of photography to communicate the complexities of an issue quickly and artistically gives it great power in being able to help ameliorate societal issues. From the Vietnam War to the Syrian refugee crisis, photography has brought faraway issues close to our hearts. Through its deep surrealism, photography surrounds everything in a mist. 
It's important for the photographer to use the right lens when taking a picture. It's as important that the viewer uses the right lens to enjoy it. It's probably in our best interest to see photography as a medium of expressing beauty instead of a medium of expressing and accurately representing reality. Einstein once said that man should look for what is and not for what should be. The world of images around us is warped and it's up to us to decide in which way. Today is my mom's birthday and I'll be taking pictures of her to capture her smiles, to capture her love for me, but not to capture the reality that I want to exist. Thank you. <laughs>